Hello, and welcome back. For some reason, I held on to this 20-year-old shoebox diorama we had to make for an elementary school project. So in today's video, I wanted to try to remake it, but I do want to have some kind of goals. I want to keep it a similar composition. I want it to be the same footprint or the same size, and I want to level it up in some way. So let's get started. I started off with a styrofoam base, and I cut out a relief for the river. Since I didn't have a shoe box, nor did I want to put it in another shoe box, I then wrapped it in balsa wood. With the sides now in place, I moved on to applying the ground texture. It's the same ground texture that I've used many times now. I just ran it through a blender this time. You can ignore the pink XPS foam. I ended up not using it. I wanted to create a dirt overhang, which I just end up making using the ground texture itself. I wanted to imply that frequent floods have eroded the riverbanks. And on the plus side, it gives more verticality to the diorama that the shoebox one didn't have. And if I'm being honest, I saw Night Shift's Panzer of the Lake diorama and I wanted to give it a shot myself. And now with the ground texture dry, I moved on to giving it a base color of burnt umber to prep for applying the dirt texture. The way I apply dirt texture is very similar to Luke Talon. I just use watered down Mod Podge or straight up Mod Podge and I use dirt from my backyard that's been sifted through a stocking that's in a paint can lid. And then off camera I added the smaller little stones and the bigger rocks and boulders that line the bottom of the river. So with the stones now glued in place I then wanted to put in the root structure underneath the overhangs of the dirt embankment and what better material to use than actual roots and plant life. It can be a little tedious picking out the right size roots for the scale that you're working in and obviously applying them but I think it's a pretty cool little effect. And now with the roots glued down and dried, I then moved on to prepping and applying the static grass. This is still that same woodland scenics grass that I've been using in all my projects. It's seven mil in this time. The color choice for the grass in this instance doesn't really matter. And then after repeating that a couple more times off camera, it came out pretty good. Now when working with black primer, you have to be very cognizant of what's around you. It can literally cover anything it rolls by. See what I mean? With it now primed black, I then decided to tackle the grass. I wanted to start off by using a dry color, in this case XF60. We're just aiming for the tips of the grass as much as possible, avoiding the absolute base. Next, I wanted to paint the base of the grass, so I used a mixture of XF67 and XF4. It's, I don't know the exact ratio, it's heavier towards the XF67 though. And I'm aiming this at the base of the grass, because this is the deepest green I'm going to be using, so everything from here is going to be lighter. Speaking of lighter, all I did was I added a little extra XF4 just to brighten it up just a little bit more. And here I'm also aiming for the middle of the, the grass and actually just full patches of it just to break it up a little bit. Happy with how the grass was turning out, I then decided to paint the dirt. For that I chose my go-to color which is XF52 or Flat Earth. With this pass mainly focusing on the recesses, the shadowed in areas, and just the, the, the damp earth. And then I followed up with XF57, great highlighting color. These two are my go-to for any kind of earth effects. But maybe the next time I do grass, I might try to get out of this desaturated color palette that I seem to be stuck in. 
Happy with the grass and the dirt, I then moved on to painting the base of the river. For that I used XF62, or Tamiya Khaki. It's a good little muddy, murky little river color. After painting the river bottom, I then went around painting a bunch of little stones here and there and coloring in some of the rocks for the campfire. Satisfied with that, I then moved on to prepping for the resin pour. To do that, I haphazardly made a dam using green painter's tape and then backing it up with some duct tape. And with the memories of Boy Light Hobby Time and Nat One videos both having resin pour problems in their most recent videos, I just threw caution to the wind and sent it. You know, because what's the worst thing that could happen? So I popped all the bubbles with the lighter and then I went to bed for that night. But like a kid excited for Christmas morning, I went and took a sneak peek early in the morning and was horrified to have discovered that it leaked. Removing it from the base that it was now affixed to thanks to the resin, I nearly tore it in half, removing chunks. The balsa wood cracked. It was a mess. Which in hindsight would have been probably funny to film, but it was 3 o'clock in the morning and I was half asleep. So then I went about trying to fix it. So after going through all the five stages of grief, I finally landed on acceptance and I moved on. It is what it is, that's just the risk you play with when you're dealing with resin. I think it got cleaned up pretty well and all things considered, it's not bad. It's rough, it's not bad. So this time I went about creating a dam in a way that I have previously using some plastic card and hot gluing it. This is ultimately the way I should have done it in the first place, but sometimes you just have to fail before you can succeed. With the dams now glued in place, I then whipped up another batch of resin tinted the same color as the riverbed, poured it in, and then popped the bubbles much like I did last time. Anyone else feeling deja vu? Except this time the dam seemed to be holding well, and then I confidently moved on to scratch building a wooden sluice box because this is a mining camp or specifically a gold mining camp the whole purpose of this shoebox diorama back in elementary school i believe was we were learning about the california gold rush and we were supposed to show the day in the life of a california gold miner who had staked his own claim once i finished the sluice box i gave it a quick little paint job and then moved on to weathering it with some dirt effects that i had recently got Happy with the weathering on the sluice box, I then moved on to painting some 3D printed parts that I had printed earlier. After painting all the little greeblies, I threw together a toothpick and tissue paper and Mod Podge tent and gave it a quick and dirty little paint job. And it was at this point that I could check on the resin, and lo and behold, it was good. So I then went about creating a rippled surface. To do that, I used gloss Mod Podge and applied it liberally with a brush. Once happy with the coverage, I then used the air from an airbrush to give it the little ripple effect. You can recreate this with a, with a straw if you don't have an airbrush. Moving on from there, I went about placing the tent, sluice box, and all of the little greeblies. It was around this time that I forgot in a pretty key aspect of the shoebox diorama that I wanted to recreate in a little bit more tasteful way, I needed to create a sign. And of course, 10 year old me thought, what better name than Gold River? So I created the sign, just in a more appropriate size. With the sign now affixed, I placed a tree that I had made off camera and then went on to placing bushes. And then having done that, I painted it black and I called it good. Oops, wrong button. Hang on one second.
So yeah, it's another one done. I think I nailed all of the things I wanted to in the beginning of this episode. I thought it would be a lot of fun revisiting essentially my very first diorama. I have absolutely no idea why I've held on to that thing for 20 years, but I'm glad I did so I could come back and revisit it. But yeah, on that note, thank you so much for watching. If you want a hint at to what my next project's going to be, stay to the very end of the video. Having said that, I'm going to go try and not think too hard about how I was 10 years old 20 years ago. So yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.